two, one, two. Walking the streets of Limerick, it has never been this quiet in the many years that I have known it. It's kind of eerie. I'm gonna head to Mark's, uh, Mark 1, and when we're there, Mark 2 is gonna pick us up. I'm gonna drive to the airport, try and get this balloon on, and um, try and get it up in the air. So yeah, wish us luck, guys. Got my jacket. Curiosity. <laughs> yeah. The majority of the time, curiosity. Oh, dude. What are we doing? that I can explain in one sentence. Hello! Hello. Hi, this is Mark Two. Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> that's Mark One and Mark Two. I think that's uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if we dispute that. <laughs> <laughs> We have a design. Our design. Sorting. Where do you want to stretch? This is this is the design. Wow. This is it. This, this is, is a... this is an early stage. Yeah. Okay. I am. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be the the bottom part that a chassis here. So this is going to hold hopefully the battery system. So we're going to have three of these. Batteries in, uh, they're each going to weigh 100 grams, which is going to take the majority of our payload to keep these things going. Um, and then we have our three arms coming out at each point of the triangle. So our original design for the arms were like this, but they did not pass the stress test. No. So, <laughs> which is why you 3D print again and again and again and again and again. So we went instead for. Mm -hmm. Uh, slightly chunkier. Slightly chunkier. And then I reminded Mark that we needed to mount things on the outside. <laughs> Mark went to you, Fecker. <laughs> <laughs> so then we came up with this design, which I think is very, very close to where we're going it's for gonna a be, final. It's going to be close to the final, yeah. Yeah, very, very close to the final. Ooh. So to break the world record, we want to get a 52. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, what can we do? You know, you have to be in the military or NASA to get something that works above 50 kilometers. Uh -huh. So, you, you know. Alright, so we break into NASA. That sounds, <laughs> sounds doable. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds, it sounds like a slightly more interesting documentary. <laughs> 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 T minus 77 minutes. Turn right, then, after 80 yards, you have reached your destination. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is our little green area. Yep. We can't let it touch the ground. Generally speaking, with a 3D printed part, you tell it, you, like if you, if you give it a cube, you say, don't print a solid cube. Certainly print the outside solid, but the inside, as long as it's structurally sound, print a honeycomb and let 85% of it be air. You need to be a little bit stronger, say, 75% would be air. And that gives you a lot of internal strength. But if you trap air inside in any of the objects that we're sending up to altitude, the pressure becomes a problem. The same way that the balloon will inflate from one meter on the ground to 18 meters in diameter at altitude, any air, once you bring it up there, acts like compressed air. And there's a very good chance that the chassis would explode if it had air locked inside and it like that. What's the highest the 3D printed structure has gone? Well, outside of an amateur sealed balloon scenario. Okay. There is a 3D printer on the International Space Station which is 400 kilometers up. 
That's right, but that's not amateur, and yeah. it's not in a vacuum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in the best part of a vacuum. Yeah. We're above 99.99% of the atmosphere. Yeah. So there's not much there to hold it together. If so we get there. If we get there. <laughs> No camera on this side, right? Just the one pointing up. So uh, just the one pointing up. Yeah. You can go like that. Yeah, you can go like that. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. All right. Unroll the table, please. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> That's it. It's the inner sleeve then. Right. Oh. Okay. I'm under it now. Is this a bad thing? <laughs> We're going to go and try and get the final Raptor 4 assembled. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And whatever problems we discover along the way will be fatal. I have a problem for you. Oh, great, brilliant. It's my favorite thing to hear. Even start. All right, let's kill the lights. So, got my flight authority today from the UK. From the UK FAI. F, uh, yeah, F, uh, F, Flight Association or whatever they call it. No time is what they call it. Uh, okay. Notification to airmen. Um, uh, in that, we have a small, small rearrangement of plans because they will not give us permission to fly on Friday as RAF are doing maneuvers in the area. Oh my god, so we have to fly on Saturday now instead? So we'll fly on Saturday instead and we're flying very early in the morning before the wind picks up. Um, alright. I, <laughs> I've been in this so long now I can do it in my sleep. Yeah, this is our uh, construction two days. Uh, last night we put the arms on, secured them in place. We put our aerials for our two RF antennas and our GPS aerial, which is coming down here as well. They'll all go into the pits board, which will mount here. And then this is our backup to our other two trackers. This is the satellite tracker. So as long as I can see the sky, We'll get a signal once every five minutes. Done. That's where it is. Oh my god! You really get to flex your problem-solving muscles uh, on a Mark project because uh, there are problems that need solving. That's our 900. Oh, That's gosh. where I thought we'd be. 900 grams. Fuck. How are we attaching all of this to the balloon? We see this is just tying a knot. It's literally having nightmares about accidentally letting go of the full balloon before we've tied anything onto it. Oh man, I'm going to be inflating the balloon and you're going to be holding it. If you leave it, go. Not helping. <laughs> oh man. We're going to have you on camera leaving it go. My arms are not going to thank you when this is finished. Here, I'll slip them myself, is it? Oh. Let's shake this bottle. Four, 
for the win. Oh, God. <laughs> it's gone. Ah! Oh, my God. It's got behind the cloud! <laughs> what? This is, let's do it again! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. Okay. Here, straight that GoPro face the front ways. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> yes, sir. At the moment, we reckon it's gonna land here. You have arrived. Yeah, okay. Okay. Got it. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. It's totally ruined. The spot trace broke off. This is how we found it. Wow. Look where it landed. Like, the spot trace broke off its peg right here in the end. That is carbon reinforced nylon. This guy broke off, the Kemp logo broke off. I hope that was on there when we were up at altitude. Uh, this entire <laughs> arm broke off. That's a piece of the internal cage. Uh, both aerials are intact. Mark isn't answering. All right, we gotta pick it up and go. Yep. <gasps> I have awful news. <laughs> Not the nylon, you'll note. <laughs> at the pinch points where the uh, tie wraps were, the chassis broke. Look at that. Not even the tie wraps broke the chassis. Okay. You've just been to space. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it yeah. has. Mm. Ha. We recovered the payload. <laughs> Successful recovery of the payload. Wow. Well done, guys. Wow.